everyone, welcome back to RTS and M I C K E Y M O U S E. How's that for an intro? Yes, we are going to continue talking about organizing some Disney supplies. And the one thing I want to mention though, uh, even though I'm doing Disney supplies, you can do this same thought process with absolutely any theme or category you have in your space that you have a lot of. You simply just think of your end game. Where do you want your papers? Where do you want your embellishments? Give yourself an allotted spot or allotted space or allotted tote, bin, basket, cube unit, whatever. And so you can see in yesterday's video that this was my allotted space for my Disney embellishments and they all got in there except one little sheet of Simple Stories die cuts and they just went in my die cut binder. So easy to do. I'm so happy with this. And then also I wanted to show that in last week's or last week's yesterday's video of organizing Disney that you can also consider what tools you have and so then you could keep your theme tools in a separate area and so for me I don't really have any Disney stamps if I do they would just get put in my regular stamps I do have one Disney related punch and I keep this basically near my desk because I kept having to go get it all the time and so I thought that makes no sense to keep getting it if I use it all the time it really should be in arm's reach so it just sits on my desk and so this go can be applicable to any theme you have not just Disney and so what I'm going to do today is that I am going to show you my fun fair paper category I've been asked and asked and asked and I keep saying I'm going to do it and today's uh, is the day I'm going to do it and I will tell you of all my paper categories this is the biggest category I have because under fun fair I put more than just Disney this isn't just red blue and yellow and black paper no because I really only have two of those Mickey uh, Say Cheese and Magical Wonder. I really only have two companies that follow that color scheme. The rest is other paper categories that you can include. So I just called it Fun Fair. And the reason I did that is because I did not want to have a section for circus. I didn't want to have a section for uh, Disney. I didn't want to have a section for amusement park. I didn't want to have a section for carnival. So what I simply did was I called it Fun Fair because all of these collections, and that's basically what all these are, are collections. Uh, I just put them under one name called Fun Fair. And I will have a video listed below that I talk about paper categories and sorting papers and all that good stuff. And so with that, please remember that here at RTS, we have playlist for everything. And so you can look under the playlist, rearrange this stuff, and everything that has to do with organizing is in that playlist there. That will keep you busy for several months. Absolutely. So a lot of my subscribers said they've been re-watching my videos and that really uh, touches my heart. I appreciate you saying that because I do talk a lot. I do share a lot. I do show a lot. So the fact that you would want to see that twice, uh, that really means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. So in the last video, I forgot to show my purge pile. And so this is everything that I purged. And so I did add I had several of these, so I did add one of these to the purge pile for the giveaway. So I go to yesterday's video where we talked about organizing embellishments. And someone, if you want to win all of this, there is a pack of buttons and scraps and some other Disney-related stickers, things like that. So if you would like to get your name in that drawing, definitely do that. So uh, let's get with Miggy and let's... Let's start playing. Absolutely. Okay. I don't know if I will have to stop and start this because this pile is, let's see, it is probably eight inches tall. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. You had these. And so that's what I want to show. Okay. So the one thing I want to stress uh, when it comes to organizing anything in your space, it doesn't have to be a one for all. Everything doesn't Everything you own does not have to be in one place. You can divvy up your supplies. And I think that's a great option because you see that representation. And we'll talk about that later again in the video. That you'll see that representation and it triggers something in your brain. Oh, I have that and I have that and I have that. And you just play with your supplies better. And then also there goes without saying, when you spend time organizing your supplies, what I have found in my spending freeze over the last couple years, you know, cutting back, not, not being a zero percent spending freeze because that is unrealistic for most of us but really really cutting back really thinking really thinking about where I have my supplies how I use them how I want to access them and then putting things away quickly that was an aspect too that you what I have found that the more I scrapbook 
the more I see, the less I need. I mean, I don't know how that works. I think it's because I'm focused on what I already have rather than what's coming out. So that's been a switch for me over the last four or five years. So in the front of my fun fair category is that I, I'm going to have to move my jadeite because I don't want anything to happen to my jadeite. No, no, no. I treasure my jadeite. Is that I have a paper group. It is nothing but star paper. I think there's a couple bokeh pieces in here, but this is where I put my fun fair. I'm sorry. This is where I put all my star papers. And I, I would say about six years ago, seven years ago, I started uh, really wanting star paper for my Disney pages. And I just love star paper. So I have a collection of nothing but paper. There's that bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. I did kind of put those in the front. And so you can see this is nothing but star paper. And in the front is multicolor, 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 multicolor. I'll just keep on going. And then what do I get into? Then I get into pink. And then I get into red. I only have a couple red. <sighs> red is such a hard color to find. It really is. Red. And then there's some orange. And a lot of this is by Bella Boulevard and Echo Park. Okay, and then we get an orange, and there's the peak of yellow, green, and you get the point. This just goes by rainbow, and I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> yeah, there's blue, and there's some turquoise, uh, some green turquoise, and then dark turquoise, blue. I even have purple stars. Uh, let me keep moving. And then I even have some gray, and then at the end, I have black, and I don't think I have any gold. Because gold always goes at the end of my rainbow, because in real life... If you're a leprechaun, what do they teach you? Yes, there's magic at the end of the rainbow, and that would be gold. So right there is some silver. Okay, so that is my star category. So even though these are all stars, I have these organized too. I put the multi in the front. I struggle using that, but you see I buy it, but I struggle using it. But it's great for a kid starter, absolutely. And then the rest of my star paper. And now this has been something that I have been buying and accumulating and I stopped buying other things so I could buy things that I really want. And star paper, I wanted to build up an inventory of that. And so, yeah, I have a lot of star paper. And I have been gifted some of this as well. And so that went by rainbow. So even in the fun fair, I have a subcategory of stars. Okay? And then within that stars, what do I have? Multi. And then I went into rainbow. And then I even added some italics. So I wanted to show that. That is in the front of my fun fair and it's easy to see because it's by rainbow when you have papers uh organized by rainbow it's so easy to see at a glance because it is in rainbow color and we were taught that at a young age love that okay so that is my star subcategory and so i will say that when you are when you are organizing paper, do not micromanage your paper, meaning do not. And that's why my fun fair is so big. Don't micromanage and say, okay, well, if you have, say you could have home and then you could have a kitchen and you could have garden and then you could separate the garden into uh, spring and uh, outside and then playtime. You know what I mean? You have to really kind of Get those categories in a bigger group. Don't have 85 different paper categories. You won't remember them. So the least amount of paper categories you can have, that's what you need to do. Unless you're someone who really needs it detailed in order to find what you, what you need. Okay, so every one of my paper categories is divided by this. It is an... It's a piece of paper that's not so loved, but it's nice weight. This was die cuts with a view. And then I just added a tab and then I would just print out on my computer and this says fun fair. And that title came from my little girl. She's the one that gave me the title for this. And I thought, yes, that will encompass not only Disney, but amusement park. And you'll see, <laughs> yeah, you'll see what it is. It's a lot. So of course you saw the stars. There's my divider. Then what do I have right after my divider? I have 12 or 12 sticker sheets. Now, some people are going to say, well, why would you have these 12 by 12 sticker sheets? And I think there's only six or so. Uh, I, either I have duplicates or I don't have a collection to go with them. And then where else would I put them? I don't want to tear down a 12 by 12 sticker sheet if it is like per theme. These are Disney and amusement park related. I have Lost in Neverland and Pirates and Mermaids. And then, of course, you can see at the, at the back here, I have some of that traditional red, black, and yellow color combination by Simple Stories and Echo Park. So these are either extras or I don't, they're, it's just a sticker sheet. I have nothing else to go with it. So I just kept these sticker sheets in front so that when I go to play with it, 
anything in this fun fair paper category whether it's with these collections or not i have options of stickers and you frankly can do a lot with a piece of paper and just a sticker yes you can absolutely so that is what's in the front and then after that and i'm just going in if you were looking at my bookcase it'd be left or right you're going to see my next group and let me grab it here and it's quite the chunk too let me see if i can grab it all at one time uh let's see I even found a piece of graphic 45 paper. I didn't even know I had. Isn't that interesting? So we're going to go right into the next group. And this is how I basically do every one of my paper categories, whether it's fun fair or if it's outdoors. I have my divider. Any 12 by 12 sticker sheets because I found that if I always kept every sticker sheet in with a collection, then I just never play with it because you can use sticker sheets then more than just that collection. And then I go into loose papers. And so this is loose papers. This uh, has nothing to do with collections or maybe uh, if I wanted a collection, but I only want it, you know, I don't want to spend $15, I would buy one of that piece of paper. So you'd see some of that. So you're going to see this has anything to do with games and puzzles, carnivals, Disney, amusement, a fun fair. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's what it is. So we got bingo, crossword puzzle. We have cards, crossword puzzle, checkers, and you see what I'm saying. Oh, there's quite a few of that. Oh, that's Emma Shop Collection. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Okay. I don't even need to say. And then, of course, there's cards. So, fun fair. Anything that is the fun activity, <clears throat> excuse me, in life. <clears throat> and I think I have to get a drink already because I still have a sore throat. I apologize. I'm telling you, I don't know what's going around, but it seems like nobody can get rid of it. Everybody's on second round of antibiotics. It's crazy. Uh, my hubby went to the doctor the other day, and all three doctors in that location were sick as well. I don't know how doctors are sick and still can w wait on patients, but God love them. I'm telling you, that's, that's terrible. So then, of course, there's more cards. And this is old crate paper, too. That is old crate paper. That's like the beginning of crate paper. And then we have dominoes. So you can see what I mean by fun fair. To me, those remind me of medallions. There's tickets. Tickets. This is a great place. Where else would you put ticket paper? We have a lot of that, especially if you're a longtime scrapbooker, because we always say, oh, these are great for cut aparts. <laughs> and then we never cut them apart. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that is my loose papers. Okay, so I think then what I got into now was I got into, well, I don't know what I got into. I don't know why those papers are there. Oh, well. Uh, I thought maybe I was getting into another category, but I guess not. Okay, so I'm still on my loose papers. And so we have, I only bought this piece of paper for one thing. And I'm glad I'm doing this because I'm going to reacquaint, reacquaint myself with all my papers. Because I bought this because I wanted to do a layout about Webkins. And I recently just found some memorabilia about Webkins. So now I know exactly where this piece of paper is. So this is by Doodlebug at the zoo but to me this reminds me of webkins and remember the craze and so that's what i'm going to do so here we have pretzels that would be like for fair carnivals a type of thing this is definitely a disney page this is we are memory keepers but i bought it for the seven dwarfs mine that's what i bought this well i had already had this collection but when i saw this i took it out of the collection of this we are memory keepers because this really is shine this is in my outdoor group I had an extra piece of this and I put it in my fun fair because I want to use it for Seven Dwarfs Mine. I mean, it's diamonds and gems. Well, of course that's Seven, seven Dwarfs Mine. And so again, just more Disney, Disney cameos, cameos. Where else am I putting polka dots? <laughs> yeah, movie reels. And there's that sunburst. Well, that's Carnival. And then also to, I think this had to do like a Webkins and then some whale. And again, these tickets cards medallions medallions I'm not sure why this is in there <laughs> head in the clouds oh i think this goes with uh i was thinking that would go with uh the mermaid line but anyways i have duplicates <laughs> so i just stuck them in there whale do you remember that um disney movie called i think it's disney or pixar uh, shark tale love that movie still love it yes and so again pandas whales anything and there's some more of that loose disney now this this is very thin this is by creating keepsakes oh creating keepsakes approved well who knew that they put their signature on paper this is from 2002 that's 17 years old 
but it's from uh, EK Success or Sandy Lion, or did Sandy Lion go under EK Success? But anyways, very thin, but it's definitely heavy theme. Why not use it somewhere in our future? Okay, so that is my loose papers. Okay, so that's what we have. Divider, 12 by 12 sticker sheets, and you can see everything is separated by a piece or two or three of copy paper. I don't know why those extra ones were in there, but that's quite all right. I will tell you how sometimes extras get in there because sometimes I get a little lackadaisical about how I put things away. That's just the truth of it. Sometimes I just want to put stuff away so I can get onto my next scrapbook page. So if I find a hole, that's where it's going. <laughs> yeah, if it's in the vicinity, it doesn't matter if it's the exact house, right? Absolutely. Okay, so let me grab a chunk and yeah, let's just grab a chunk. Okay, so these are collections or mini collections or papers paired together that I want to use together. It's not always a collection or a collection pack that I bought. Okay, so let's go into, we have Bella Boulevard. Why do I have four? I don't know, but there are seven dwarfs mine. <laughs> okay, I'll just tell you the ideas I have planned. There are seven dwarfs mine. And you know, you got to do a layout every time you ride that because it's so hard to get in, to get a fast pass for that. And so this reminds me of Epcot in uh, the France. Uh, my uh, little one and I went and had a meal there. And this is exactly what I want to use for that page. So I earmarked it something special. Uh, this is for something. And uh, yes, it's a small world. <laughs> that's what that's for. Again, French, France. Uh, it's a small world. And then, of course, some of these other ones for the U.K., and then I just have them earmarked separately because I already know what layouts I want to do with that. So you can do that too. You can absolutely even have a divider that says planned layouts for your paper. You can do it in so many different ways. So this is for the prime time restaurant over at, uh, I was going to say Hollywood Studios, but no, it's called MGM, right? Is that what it's called now? I can't even remember. It used to be called Hollywood Studios. Or is that what it's called now? Anyways, that other park that nobody really goes to that has the new Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, that one right there. What is it? Now that's going to bug me. It has to be MGM, I think. Anyways, moving on. So I want to put my papers here in such a way that I get them put back in the order I want. And so then I have some of these. I don't really have a lot of Graphic 45. And one of my subscribers recently asked me, do I buy Graphic 45? No, I don't. But let me tell you something. They have beautiful papers. Once in a while, I see something that sticks out. And to me, this is a layout that I have planned. Look at that. That reminds me of that French restaurant we ate at. It was just it was lovely, lovely, lovely. And then, of course, I'm going to go faster when it comes to the collections. So there's Jungle Safari. And so this is how I do when I have a collection. There's a manufacturer's info. There's a sticker sheet or two. There's one that's Animal Safari. It's the same thing. Uh, and then there's Jungle Safari. And there's a Bow Bunny sticker. So this is all like... This is all Jungle Safari. Anything, it didn't matter if it was by Echo Park or Bo Bunny. And so that's that entire chunk right there. That's my Jungle Safari. And so when you have a category, it's okay if you combine a couple of different manufacturers to uh, make up that group. So you see in this Jungle Safari, look, I also have a Dino Friend. So anything that was in that jungle uh, theme, it would be easier to find one group of this theme of Jungle Safari than to go through and say, okay, well, where's that collection? Where's that collection? If it's related, I'm putting it together. And then, of course, with that, I beefed this up because some of these collections, I only bought one or two pieces of paper. I beefed it up by adding in some of my own papers from my own stash. So this is why it's such a chunk because I did beef it up. Okay, so that's Jungle Safari. The next one is, of course, Princess and you'll see that with this Echo Park Princess, I did the same thing. I combined. There's a sticker sheet. There's a manufacturer sheet. There are some scraps. That's how I do my scraps within a collection. And I even have some simple stories. This is Enchanted. That was that Princess line. I only bought two or three sheets. That's all I bought. Uh, yeah, I bought it for that. So I just put it right in with this other Princess paper by Echo Park. And then you can see I added... I added my own spin to this. That's what I did. Right there. I just added some of my own papers because I only had a few. Okay, so the next one, you'll see another princess. Once Upon a Time princess. And that's all this is. Okay, now let me get my sticker sheet here. 
and so sometimes my papers get out of order so when I look at my, when I'm looking at them just like today I'll put them back in order this is a beautiful collection and now I have a video listed below where we played with this collection we did base pages and also an idea for a gift this is a beautiful line but what I showed was this line but you can do it with any collection you have whatsoever okay well there's another sticker sheet yes I was gifted some of this so that was a blessing okay so let's see I think this is all Once Upon a Time Princess. And then look, <laughs> I beefed it up because when I originally saw this collection, uh, this was a couple years ago, I bought, I think it was one or two pieces of paper. And then I was gifted the collection. So I bought, I, I think, one or one piece of paper. It might have been this floral. But anyways, what I did was then I made up my own knockoff version. So that's where all these papers come from. Look at all that. That is how I took that and beefed it up. So... Once I was gifted the original collection, I just added it to what I had already created before. Yes, that is a, look at all that princess. And so you can see I kept those two princess lines together. Okay, so now after the princess, what comes next? Well, you know it's mermaids. Yeah, so I just did mine. I didn't do them by manufacturer ABC. I just did what uh, kind of groups I wanted to keep together. So you see the princess together, the mermaids, the jungle, and then you'll see the next pile coming up. So this is Let's Be Mermaids. And so anything that had to do with this mermaid feel and theme, there is one. This is a couple of different collections. We got Echo Park, we got Chamel, we got uh, another Echo Park line. And then I just added some of my own papers once again to beef this up. Okay, so that's my mermaid. It's not a very big section, but I do definitely want to have this in my fun fair when I do some mermaid pages. And this isn't just for Disney. This is for any type of kids, toddler, any type of theme that you want to use, fun fair type of Theming is what I wanted to say. Okay, so here we have this hooray. There's only a couple, but I paid like a dollar nineteen for each one of these, and I wanted to keep them separate. These absolutely could have went in birthday, but I am keeping it just like this because to me this is more fun fair. Okay, so if you have some birthday elements and you have a, a great big paper category of birthday, but yet you want to have something for a fun fair or a carnival or amusement, you can definitely look at some of your birthday papers and it will give you the same mood and feel. Okay, so then this one is Simple Life. I would say uh, this is in the top five collections of Simple Life. And I think it's because it's such a simple line, but I love the color scheme. I love this paper. And so you can see, look at that. I have this definitely geared for Disney. I just can't wait to break this out. I keep saying I'm going to do it. But, you know, things are going to slow down in the fall. And new things are coming up on the channel in 2020. So you will see some of these uh, making an appearance. But to me, this is this is Germany. <laughs> yes, this is Germany. There, There's some Epcot... Uh, layouts I want to do with that. Okay, so the next one is uh, Pate Hate. This is by Imaginese. And this is, it has to do with um, the pirates. So I definitely could put that. See, there's pirates. I definitely could take that pirate sticker and put with that. And so that would make sense for some people. So you could definitely do that. But I will just keep this by itself. Because I may use that not just for... Uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean. I could use this also too for a birthday party that my little girl had. And then also too, we go to the aquarium a lot when she was little. So there, don't just limit yourself is what I wanted to say. And so then this is another one that I use this piece of paper as my fun fair and then as my inspiration piece. And then I just added some to it. So isn't this a great section of papers? And I use this right here, this movie reel uh, by my mind's eye that's just a basic and so then what I did was I made my own paper collection I don't think these are all now and then some are some aren't some are Echo Park some is my mind's eye and so I created a multi-color I don't know if there's another one there a multi-color fun fair all based on this right here so you can do that too this does not have to be a manufacturer's collection this can be a collection that you make on your own so you can see in my space I do a little bit of everything and when I say that I truly mean that there is I do not have a set concrete rule for anything I do I use what works and if it's working now it'll stay that way if I need to switch it up in six months I'll switch it up in six months I think that's the only truly way you can get a handle on what you own 
and what you have, what you enjoy, what you want to use, and then to actually use your product is keep changing. Yes, absolutely. I don't mean keep organizing, but I mean keep changing. Yes, because you can get in that cycle that all you're doing is organizing, so you're just shifting things around. So just keep that in mind. So now this is the group that is the traditional Disney that what most people consider. And this is my, this is my chunk. That is two companies. This is Echo Park. And then underneath of this is Simple Stories. And so with my Echo Park, and again, all I have it separated is with a piece of copy paper. And then all, all of my Echo Park papers, whether it was from Magic and Wonder, whether it was from Magical Adventure, they have been using the same color scheme for several of the releases. And so, of course, there are the sticker sheets that I have, which is from several. They're simple stories. Uh, so I wonder if I should put that into simple stories. I must have kept them all up front. We'll have to look at that when I get back to the simple stories. So I have all of this in front, all those sticker sheets. I am not going to tear down all of these sticker sheets, and I'll tell you why. Because it's one theme. Yeah, and I don't want a separate binder for Disney. I don't need it. So I just suck them in here, easy peasy. One less thing I have to do. And, of course, there's my scraps. And then this whole pile here. Let me get to the end. This whole pile right here. Oh, yes, I do have some of those Simple Stories st stickers, so I'm going to have to do that. So give me a minute there, and see what I'm saying? I have uh, I have a couple stickers I need to move, so I'm just going to do that right now, if you don't mind holding on. And there went some copy paper. So I'm just going to pull out all of those. There's a Simple Story Say Cheese. I don't know how many Say Cheese lines are they on. There's three. I think they might have came out with four. So I had a couple of those stickers in the wrong manufacturer, but it really doesn't matter. But I do like having things organized so I can find them in a quicker manner. So we'll get back to this in just a minute. Okay. So this is the, uh, I, wait, I had a manufacturer's piece of paper here. I really like keeping these uh, as another, like a little mini divider. You can't use them any longer because they're just of this cheap, glossy paper. It used to be you could use them for actually scrapbooking. So that is the Simple Stories, Traditional Disney, and this is my Echo Park. And so with Echo Park, like I said, this is several collections. I don't even know what it is. Magic and Wonder. What do we say? Magical Adventure. Let me see if I can find something else. Magic and Wonder, Magical Adventure. So however many different times they release that. And I don't have this separated by collection. It's all Echo Park that color scheme right there. I just made it simple for myself. And then the next one was the same concept, but it's simple stories. And there's that sheet. And so right there it says Say Cheese 3. So you know I have Say Cheese 2 and Say Cheese 1. And so then there's the sticker sheets. And then do I have, yes, there are my scraps. And then the rest of this is all of those collections, whatever it may be. And then I just have them all in one group. I don't have each one of these Simple Stories Say Cheese lines divided. That's what I wanted to say. They're all in one big lump because they're interchangeable. The color scheme is the same, whether it's the Echo Park or whether it's the Simple Stories. As they keep releasing these, they're all the same. They're all the same. Simple Stories is a little uh, darker tones and Echo Park is a little bit of the brighter tones, but it's the same exact color scheme it really truly is so that is how I handled the traditional Disney I just put it by manufacturer because that's about the only two that I have bought in that traditional red yellow black white color scheme okay so then the next one we go into we get into some more of the boy related <laughs> you know I want to say that boy related items uh, so let me grab a chunk here Okay, let me just grab a chunk. So the next one is Echo Park Once Upon a Time. And so or this is a Once Upon a Time print. So now we went to the princess and mermaid stuff. And then I had all the traditional Disney stuff. So then my next group is Once Upon a Time print. So when I'm looking for something to do something like this, it's easier to have two or three collections of basically the same mood and feel. That's just how I did it. So, of course, there is the manufacturers. And then there is, well, there's my sticker sheet. <laughs> Yeah, this is how I do it, and of course there is not in order, but that is how I do it. Copy paper, divider sheet, sticker sheet, and then if there was any scraps. But I haven't even played with this line. Have not played with it, have not played with it, have not played with it, and I, yeah, it's completely brand new. 
that is that once upon a time print so the next one is of course space academy now why do i have this in disney because this line completely reminds me of disney and for me where else would i put it you could put it in school you could also just have a paper category for space and outer space. It depends on how much you have of this. I only have this collection. Well, I think there's a few other things in there. But, yes. And so, of course, I've been playing with this. This is just a lovely collection. And so, look at Kit Crunch for September. We played with this. And so, there is Space Academy. And there's the sticker sheets. And then there are the papers. And then, of course, there are some that I added in here that are not by Cartabella. But it's the same theme. Those are color play. Now let me talk about photo play for a minute. Photo play has a subcategory called color play and color play, you're gonna get that shiny paper. And so it looks like the recent Teresa Collins paper that came out, she all went, she went all glossy. And I think there's uh, that, I think it's Wild Whispers from Canada. I think they do this sheen. I am not a fan of this. So I really hope companies aren't going to go to this treatment for all of their collections. I would be really disappointed. This this can only go so far. I mean, yeah, I, I it's okay. But uh, yeah, I'll just move on. I just hope a collection, I just hope manufacturers aren't going to this. I, I just don't really, don't care for it. And so then, of course, there's some photo play. And so then there's some basic gray. We played with that. And again, anything that had to do with the space theme, I kind of just put in with this. And then I did keep a separate... I don't even know why that cardboard's there, but that's okay. Remove that. As I do have some basic gray, and I did keep this separate because basic gray is no longer in business, and so this is the Aurora line, which we played with that as well. And I see that I need to move a piece of paper, this piece of paper right here. I need, because that's basic gray Aurora, I want to move that. So there is that, that one. Okay, so there's Space Academy. And so then there's Basic Gray Aurora. And you can see these are basically collections other than that first group, which was nothing but loose papers. Okay, I'll stop there for a minute because I will tell you I still got a third to go through. Okay, whoop on. Okay, so after the princess and the mermaids and the traditional Disney colors, and then we went into the boys and the princesses, the prince, and then we went into space and things like that. Now we're going into toy box. Yes. Okay. So I just kind of broke these collections up in kind of a loose group. So like I said earlier, when I want to play with the prints, <laughs> I can pull out the prints papers. When I want to play with it with the space themed, I go to the space section and then also to the traditional um, Disney colors and then the princess if I want to play with the princess then all of my princess collections are together if that makes sense So this is toy box, you know, this is oh, yeah This is probably my second favorite collection ever by because this is story based if I've never seen story based And I won't I won't talk long about that, but that is this collection here Again, there's a sticker sheet and then we go after toy box then we go into some carnival and uh, circus so let me grab that chunk <laughs> shall we okay so here we have some this is all well there's some star paper but this is basically carnival and so i'm just going to throw this in this circus i'm just going to throw it right in here with this circus because it's just three pieces of paper no, I don't I don't need it separate. I'll just throw it in with this circus right here because if someone says go pull your circus line I know that I have two fancy pants and carnival So I know exactly where they are and so when I am playing with a group of papers I will just grab the chunk of the collection I don't stand there at my bookcase and look for an individual piece of paper I grab the whole chunk pull it out and look at what I want. So this is uh, fancy pants This was really um when this collection came out <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say people made fun of it, but they were like, huh, that's that's kind of strange. But anyways, I'm so glad I have it because I saw the possibility in this collection. It was in 2014. It's called Everyday Circus. And that's basically what it is, Everyday Circus. So anything under the big top, circus, that is what this is. And so you can see, I put it in fun fair. That's what I did. So there we have that. And that's what that means as far as that carnival look. That amusement park, that circus, under the big top, under the tent. Yes. And so this is Everyday Circus. Look at that. Oh, isn't that? And I know some of you gals have this line. Yes. I mean, this paper. Oh, I loved Fancy Pants. Man. Whew. I wish they were still Fancy Pants. Moving on. Okay. So, Fancy Pants. That's my circus. So then my next thing is my next circus group. You see how I have that together? is my Cartabella Circus, and there is some Echo Park, but Cartabella Echo Park, 
same in my eyes, and because they are sister companies. And so anything they had to do with this circus in the Cartabella and Echo Park is all together. So this was the last one by Stephen Duncan. Love this. This is story based. I'm going to do a story about that. And then, of course, we have the other, the previous first circus, which was called Circus Party. And I did not buy this collection when it came out because I'm like, oh, well, I really use it. And then it started becoming scarce. And so I started picking up one piece of paper at a time. So it took me a couple years to get these. I don't know if I have all of them. It doesn't matter. But yeah, it's interesting how that happens. And so when you see some of the things that I show, you can still get some of these. You're just going to have to look in the sale and the clearance section. And you might have to piecemeal it. You might only get one piece at a time. So this is just my chunk of circus paper. And you see that I don't have it divided by Echo Park or Cartabelle. This is just a circus group by those two companies. And then one of the probably the best amusement park lines ever created was Midway by October Afternoon. Do we have a year for this? Let's just see if we can find one. We're just hanging out and talking by paper, right? Oh man, everybody loved this. If this was re-released today, people would just go ape over it. <laughs> yes, it really would. And so I don't need to keep both of those. Of course, I don't know. This is pretty heavy duty. I could probably use that, so I'll keep that. Sometimes I absolutely will do that. I would cut that out and I would use that as a piece of paper. So there's the stickers. I kept those together. Look at that. Now, I will tell you, I knew I had more than one. So one of these is in my alpha section. And then one of these is distributed among some stickers I have in a binder. So this is all, I mean, look at that. I'm just going to do a flip through of that. Midway. Yes. Perfect for Disney pages. Amusement park. Carnival. Day at the pier. I mean, look at that. Yeah. And then you can see what I did is I added my own papers to beef up this collection. Yeah. This is a mega collection. Let me see if I can get some more. Some of these are my own papers I added. There's ring toss. That's fun. Main gate. So you see how this all fell under that fun fair. That's just what I gave it. Because at one time I had it Disney. One time I labeled it amusement. And so as I was doing this a few years ago, I asked my little one. I said, what could I call this entire group? And she's the one that gave me the, the name fun fair. Till the world. <laughs> Love it. Candy apple. Love it. Okay, now there's a scrap that needs to go up front. And so then what else do we have? Carousel. Neon lights. Yes, very pretty. Duck pond. <laughs> Just, yeah, this was the best, bar none, amusement carnival theme. And this is just things I added. And this is a Ferris wheel. Look at that. <laughs> oh, love, love. There's cotton candy. And I think I have pretty much went through these. But that is just a quick little flip through of... I would say the best collection ever. <laughs> yes, I'm going to keep this here in the front, but I don't have to get a page protector and put that in there. Okay, so that is October Afternoon Midway. Again, more carnival amusement. You see the whole theme. I don't need to keep saying that. Okay, so I have one last group here. And so what do we have? Okay, so you can see that my fun fair was more than just uh, Disney that traditional Disney. I had the princess, I had the princess, I have the mermaids, I have the pirates, I had that uh, carnival amusement, and now we're kind of getting into games and puzzles and things like that. So that's where this is coming in at. And I put this at the end of my group because I would probably use these less, but at least I know where they are, and that's the key factor, knowing where things are. So this is Well Played by Cartabella, and this is about games and puzzles, and right there you can see. I love this game, shuffle, dominoes, cards. So again, I incorporated, you know, bingo, any type of puzzles and games. You could put that in this fun fair. Or if you have, what do you call this group? How do you have it separated? How do you have it labeled? Please list below because I would love to know what you call this. Fun fair has just worked for me. Yes, man, that paper is high. Don't fail me, babe. paper. Don't fall and don't fail because I will sit here and cry. I would not want to organize that again. So then the other paper uh, line I have, this is Fancy Pants called Memories Captured. And you will have saw this in a 6x6 paper pad if you watched our Spending Freeze freebie. Hint, hint, wink, wink. So go over and check that out. And so again, I'm not even going to tell you uh, 2013 Fancy Pants had it all going on. Look at everything you got included. 
in one collection. And so this at one time was in Fancy Pants. At one time this was in Documented. But as I see this, this is kind of getting older. You know, it is, um, what, six years old. To me, I see this. I could still use this. And to me, this is fun fair for those type of Disney and just fun related pages. Okay, so then the next one is Teresa Collins. And I have bought this line several times. I think I'm up to three of them. Yeah, I think there's three of these. And this is the last one. And so this is what at one time was in uh, Teresa Collins Manufacture. And then one time it was in my documenting section. And then over the years as I have went through things, to me this reminds me of Disney pages. So of course there are some die cuts that sometimes die cuts would you in the past would come on a 12 by 12 sheet. And so this was from 2013. And then there are the sticker sheets. How many, how many do we have? Let's count one. Two, three, four. Yeah, that doesn't mean I bought four collections, but I do have four sticker sheets. This just reminds me of Disney, a lot of different Disney. Someone challenged me. I will pull this out and use it. And of course, this is why it reminded me of Disney, this right here. Oh, just love it. I'll just flip through this if you want, because this will be the end of this video. But yes, you can still find this. I have seen it in some stores. You can still get it. You might not get the whole collection. You never know. Maybe you'll see it a Tuesday morning next week. How's that? Yes. So, of course, look at that. Movie reel. And what do they call that? Film strip? This is called doily. This one is called dots. Not hard to figure that out. And these are the type of collections, and I love I love Teresa Collins papers the way they used to be. The last collection came out in that shiny, glossy stuff. I won't even look at that because I'm not interested in that. So I hope that's not going to be something that's mainstream. Uh, but you could take a collection like this, and this is how you could do a month in review album. And we will be talking about that in December. But something like that fancy pants line, this line right here. Something like this that is about documenting anything. Something like this. And then something like this Teresa Collins line, this right here, you can see the sticker sheet. This is perfect for documenting a whole year's worth of memories. And we're going to be talking about that in December. So definitely hit that notification bell or keep checking back. In December, we will be doing a month in review series. That's probably the only thing I'm going to do in December because, you know, I'm hoping, you know, to enjoy the holidays, but I really do want to spend time on month in review uh, not only for the channel, but then also too for me because a new year is coming up. I'd like to wrap up some things, but this will be coming up. And I know I have some subscribers who have been waiting and waiting. Hang in there, baby. I will be coming. <laughs> this will be happening. So this was that collection. And so you can see this is so neutral and so versatile. You could do this and uh, this would be perfect for month and review. See, ledger. Just It's just a beautiful collection. And this paperweight, bar none, is beautiful. And I did show in some month and review videos, which I will have them listed below. I did use a Teresa Collins line for my entire year. And so uh, there's just wonderful papers. Yeah. This is when paper was paper, but I digress. Look at that. Look at that beautiful floral. And again, this is why. This is definitely recording the story, documenting life, numbers, months, day. This would be perfect for a title page for a month in review. Love that. See, now maybe I'm thinking I should use this uh, for a month in review, but no, I have something else earmarked. And again, we'll be talking about that in December. And so some of this, oh, what do we have? Die cuts. Well, that needs moved. And then there's more of that beautiful film strip, film strip. And I think we are basically to the end of that. Yes, that is just a beautiful collection. Okay, so that is that. And so you can see that with my uh, paper categories, I separate each one with a piece of copy paper. I keep the manufacturers up front, the info. If I have bought more than one, I keep that so then I know maybe I have supplies someplace else or maybe I have embellishments to go with it. My uh, stickers go up front and then, of course, scraps or things that I don't want to lose, like these die cuts, they go in there. Okay, so that is how I do each one of those. And then also, too, with this fun fair, did you see how I did another level of organizing as that I grouped it by the circus, I grouped it by the documenting, I grouped it by the prince and the princess, and then loose papers and then games and circus. 
Yes, absolutely. So even more organizing within this category of fun fair. Absolutely. So I think that's all I have for this flip through of uh, this fun fair and then also to organizing Disney. So if you didn't watch yesterday's video, hop over and how I had a mega, mega pile of Disney embellishments and I wanted to scale them down for just an allotted space of a photo box. So that was fun. Very happy with that because now when I want to sit down and pull out this and I want to say I'm going to do a page about Epcot, okay, which that will be coming up. Uh, I can pull out that photo box and put that photo box right on my desk and every Disney theme related product I have is right in one box and on my desk. So it's just the versatility and then also do accessing and then putting away things. Things have to be easy or I get too lazy and I don't want to, I don't want to put it away. And when you know that about yourself, you will really change how you shop and how you organize. Absolutely. So I hope this was enjoyable for the last couple of days, just talking about Disney or carnival or circus or fun fair. Just because I say Disney, it isn't just Disney. It encompasses everything fun fair absolutely so that's all i have for today come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna do and let's sing together m-i-c-k-e-y-m-o-u-s-e bye